Hello and welcome to iMovie <laughs> tutorial here and let me preface this by saying that iMovie can do a lot of things and there's a lot of different ways to do everything. So what I'm going to do here is a what we might call a quick start and I want you to remember that there are many ways uh, to do any, any, num any one of these. So how to start. The first thing uh, if you look up here, we have already opened iMovie. It's right here. So iMovie by default cannot work without a library open. And every time you open it, you're going to get uh, an iMovie library. Now this, this particular iMovie uh, library was con was actually made or created on November 12th of last year, uh, 2019. Ah! Now this is the default and you have opened that on your computer uh, and on your hard drive and it's on your hard drive right now. So that said, we're not going to go with the default and this is what I'd like for you to do. We're going to go to File, we're going to open the library. We're not going to open the library. We're going to create a new one. There we go. And you're, it's going to want you to name it. So I'm going to say that this is a tutorial. And you'll put, want to put a name. I would probably put the name of your narrator. Uh, um, and you can name it anything you want. Doesn't matter. I'm going to direct it to another hard drive, an external drive, which I'm going to put right here. And uh, that's all you need to do. Uh, so for confusion's sake, and this has caused a lot of confusion, uh, let's close our default library right now. So we're going to close it. So file, close library, and there we have just the one library open with our subfolder, which is called an event. Events are just containers for different types of media, video, audio, stills, and variations of that as far as maybe you have stills of uh, birds, you have stills of mountains. You can make an event that says each one of those and store them in there. Okay, and that's the first thing you do is open iMovie and create a new library on your hard drive. Let's, the, the next thing you need to do is import the media into iMovie. So what I would suggest is go ahead and let's just call this, this is a generic uh, event. I remember event is just a, a, a folder to contain media. So let's call this video. And we're going to return that. And while we're doing it, let's do another one. File, new, event, right? Or option in. And it goes into there. And let's call this uh, stills. There we go. All right. So these are subfolders. Let's go ahead. So there's two ways to do this. Uh, and we're going to do both ways. Uh, just because you will encounter each way, uh, you know, depending on the situation. So let's go ahead and import, import right to our, our folder here, our container of the video. So let's, let's look for it. We're going to navigate just like we always would. And I can tell you that I have put uh, the media on Pippin here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and select that. And there's two. I want to get two. I want to get this one, and I also want to get this one, these two, just because uh, it, I think it'd be more interesting in the demonstration. Normally, you would just have your one, but I'm going to do two in this case. So I'm going to do the command to select two. Let me just make a one insertion here uh, and make sure that you import it. Just to point out, if you do import, uh, you'll want to make sure that when you choose something, like right here, uh, I'm choosing this as we will, uh, look up here. It says import to, and we have something that looks very familiar. Here's our events. 
in the tutorial video, which is the library, right? And so you would just choose one of these because it could go in the event, in the wrong event, which is not a big deal because we can always change that. Okay, I just wanted to point that out. And it's gonna close, uh, I do import, and it's gonna go right into the video. And boy, that was pretty quick. <laughs> we didn't even get to see the progress bars go by. Um, okay, so let's get some stills here, same thing, but this time we're gonna use a different method. So I have my stills. I've opened up Pippin here, and these are gonna be my stills. The do event, uh, this is this one that I wanted to get. Let's put it over here. We're gonna use command click to select which ones we want. So that's the JPEG, this is a JPEG, and then um, we have this other one right here. And this time all we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag it right into our stills. And you see where it turns into the plus and let go. There we have it, all right. And that's the two ways that you import your media into iMovie. Okay, so let's look and see what we just did. Here's our library called Tutorial Video. It's the main folder. Remember, everything is in there. Uh, we just imported two clips of video right in there. There they are, and our stills. We have these three still photos. Now let's look in the whole, the whole overarching uh, folder, which is everything, and we do see all, everything right there. Okay. All right, so let's go uh, back to video. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to tag or identify or mark the clips that we want to use in our video. So this is the best way to do this, I think, because iMovie doesn't really tell you where you are in these clips, and here they are. We can't possibly do any editing uh, or selecting right now because it's too compressed. So let's expand them out. They're all the way in, so we're gonna just expand them out, and they just kind of wrap around so just about like maybe something like this, and here we have our audio, right? We have our audio, and these are the waveforms. Right here, it's silent, there's nobody talking. And this clip, the 17 minute clip is wrapped around. I'm just gonna scroll down, and we're gonna get to uh, the next clip. Uh, there we go. Takes a little time for it to catch up with itself. There we go. And then there's our second clip there. It might be that it expanded a little bit too much, so I'm gonna maybe, not that I like it, but let's do a little bit, zooming in a little bit more maybe. I think that'd be good. So there's the end, right? And there's the beginning. So here's how uh, we are going to select our clips. We are going to mark them. And at this point, uh, there, there are no marks in here. I, I'm going to show you what that is in a second. Uh, when I click here, it does not tell me where I am in this 17-minute video. It does not tell me. It can play. So if I click on that point and press the space bar, it will play. Okay, and I'm just starting and stopping by pressing the space bar, just toggling it, start, stop, start, stop. There we go. Okay, and that's how you advance, but the drawback is it doesn't tell you where you are. So we're gonna overcome that by choosing our clips. Now hopefully the transcribing process where you got timestamps is gonna aid you a lot. And you're just gonna to have to guess a little bit. Like we know if uh, it's up near the front, like maybe in the first three minutes, it might be somewhere around here and we just play. So I'm clicking and playing.
And then I say, oh, right here. Wow. That's where I wanted to start. Okay, so I'm going to remember that. I'm just going to uh, look at it. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to uh, see just, just, I just have to recognize it because no way to tell. Uh, and then let's just say that it went all the way to maybe, well, how about right here? Y al yo no tener el inglés hizo que yo pensara que no lo podía hacer y cambié de carrera. Okay, so let's create a range. Uh, I'm going to just type the R, letter R. So I'm, I've got it pressed down and I'm going to drag. And I'm just going up, see? Uh, it's wrapping around. It was right about there, I think. So now we have created a range. This is a selection in this clip. And we're going to mark it now. And this is how you do it. In iMovie, this is called rating your clip and the rating is favorite but it's actually a keyword and I really knows one keyword and it's called favorite so we're going to type the letter F for favorite and watch what happens right now I'm typing the letter F and you can see that whole clip has a green line up there and that is a keyword line they don't call it keyword in iMovie uh, they just call it rating, but it's going to serve our purpose. Now in higher end editing programs, when you do this sort of thing with the keyword, you can name the keyword, you can put it in folders, it's really amazing. But in iMovie, they just have this one, so we just have to, you know, do the best we can with it. So here's another one. Let's just pretend like uh, we, we have identified maybe this to this. So I'm going to type the letter R, hold it down and drag, just drag it maybe right there. Type the letter F and there we go. And let's keep going. We're just pretending like we know the exact place we want this. So right there, uh, I'm gonna type the letter R and drag. And I'm gonna maybe find a spot that we don't have the second person coming on. Now I'm gonna type the letter F, right? There we have that again. And let's do uh, maybe just one more. I'm gonna type the letter R uh, right here, drag, there, and so I'm going to take F again. Okay, so we have all these marked things. See, this is great. And here's the reason we do this. Because now we can sift through all of this footage and we can separate out these clips. So here's how we do it. Up here it says all clips, and they are all clips, but let's sift it so that all we see are the favorites. And there you have your clips. So make that a little bit smaller so you can, you can see it a little bit better. There we go. So there's our clips. Okay. And the next thing we need to do is create a timeline so that we can make a movie. And so what we're going to do now is build a movie. And to do that, the first thing we need to do is a timeline, and there isn't one. So this is how you make one. It's called a project or movie. All these are synonymous with just timeline. It's what it's generally called. You'll see why in just a second. So here's how we do it. We are going to make a project. So we're going to hit projects up here this button and you can see there's nothing down here. We're about to make a new project or movie. So to do that, just what you think, create new and movie. And there we have, and now we have a place to put all of our media. So let's go back in a video. These are our favorites uh, or rated or se <laughs> selected keyworded clips. Uh, and to get them in a row to make a movie, it couldn't be simpler. We're just going to drag them right down to our timeline. And here's another one. Let's drag that down. And that's all you have to do. It's uh, and just keep, keep dragging the, the clips down there. Or if you wanted to, and then I'm using my mouse, of course, to kind of scroll down the timeline. Uh, or if you wanted to, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to delete these, and they don't actually get deleted, by the way. Uh, they just 
uh, are removed from the timeline, the instances or the reference to the main clip. Alternately, you can press the letter E. That appends. So I'm just pressing letter E and it goes to the end. There we go. And that's how fast you can do it. Pressing the letter E. There we go. Okay, let me point out something very interesting about your timeline here. Uh, did you notice up in these clips that we have an orange line in addition to our green keyword or favorite? We have the orange. Now, what do you think that means? That means that this clip, this part of this whole 17-minute clip, is actually down on the timeline. And that is really handy to know. So I'm going to click that and let's see what happens. It makes the selection just like if we click the green, it also makes the selection. And that's really handy to know. Uh, if we go down here, we can do this backwards. So I'm going to uh, raise this up a little bit. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because I'm going to show you something else that's very useful. So uh, on this clip right here, let's make it a little zoom in a little bit more there. There we go. Um, so this clip here is easy to find in this long 17 minute clip. So I'm going to make, I'm going to just do all clips again. And they're, they're already there actually. Uh, if I click this to select it, it's a clip. Remember, it's a clip, or maybe a uh, maybe a little smaller one. How about this? And I do a right click or control click. It's going and then reveal in Project Media. It now highlighted this clip in all of our media. So that's very useful to know. These appear like they're gaps, but they're not. Let's put the playhead right here and press spacebar and see and watch up in the window. And uh, let's see what happens when we play across this gap. Les hizo que yo pensara que no lo podía hacer y cambié de carrera. Yo diría que there's no gap. It's just a, what they call a straight cut. Uh, but those are places where you can put transitions, which we'll talk about a little bit later. You can also stack these, like you can stack it right over that gap. That's not a good time to do this, but I'll show you what happens when you play through. So what happens is when you look, whatever's on top, you're looking down on the stack and you're going to see what's on top, but here what's underneath. You won't see it when, unless there are special circumstances that you create, like make this, uh, make this clip smaller, like a picture in picture. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So I'm going to delete this, or I don't know, we could, we could move it over here. Also, alternatively, if you wanted to put this like right here, you say, oh, I wanted to put that right there. I'm going to split that clip by Command B for Blade. And now look what I can do. Put that right in there and it'll play right through. So I'll, obviously you've got a plan where you want those. Now I'm going to just lift this up and I'm going to delete it. There you go. Now also where you made the splits, you can also trim the edges at any point. Now remember I told you that those clips are actually the original 17 minutes. They're just pieces of them. And the rest of this beyond there is invisible, which is why we can do this in all cases. By the way, this is called a magnetic timeline, and that's because these gaps that we just looked at don't really exist. Things like Premiere, uh, they will have gaps. So when we put our clip down here, it snaps 
there's no gap in between there, it looks like it on iMovie, but there's not really. Uh, and that's called a magnetic timeline. So it just snaps. You can't, that's a magnetic timeline. Specific to Final Cut Pro and iMovie, of course. Okay, and you can also get your stills, and we'll go over this in a little bit uh, more detail later. You can put that in between. You can put that on top. Now that's a good place to put a still because why? It doesn't have audio. And we'll go into more detail about that, but this is basically a timeline. Now what I'm going to do is go back to my projects, which are up here. I'm going to go back and I'll show you why. It's going to ask me to name it. So here you want to name this timeline. You can make as many timelines as you want. It could be all kinds of versions. So uh, let's just call this uh, source uh, just because, or actually let's call it uh, build. And we're going to say OK. And now there we have another one. So how do we get back to our media? Well, I just press media and go back. But something is missing here, isn't it? <laughs> our timeline. So how do you get that? We're going to go back to projects, just double click it, and it's back. It's going to happen, so don't, don't worry. You just, that's all you have to do. It's there. Okay, and that's how you uh, very quickly build a timeline. Now that we have gotten this far and we've got an actual timeline here with this populated uh, with clips, once you get satisfied that they're in the right order, uh, you can start doing uh, some of the other things. And that would be uh, putting some B-roll, maybe some stills in there when they're talking about certain things. It could even be footage if you have it. Okay, so we have all these. Uh, now, let's go up at the top here and let's, let's go and look and see what our options are for what we can do from, from here on out. Uh, first of all, we have My Media, and that is the workspace that we're in right now. The next is Audio. Now, iMovie has audio built in. Wait for it. There we have a lot of audio. We have, uh, we have music. We have um, kind of special little effect noises, we have people, all kinds of things uh, that's built right in and we'll, I'll show you how to use that in a second. This, the next one is your titles, which is very important. Generally, we've used this one called line to put in the middle of these gaps and at least make your titles, I would say, five seconds. Uh, you have to be able to read it and this is the part where you, it's going to be in English and Spanish. Uh, and so you would, you just, uh, I'm just clicking here and I'm double clicking up in the top and then uh, you can, or you can just highlight it, I guess. Uh, we'll change the font to something really different. <laughs> that, and uh, maybe make it a little bit smaller. I mean, you can just type fit it like you normally would uh, to a point. You can't drag it up and down, sadly. Uh, we've got a centered. Uh, and let's do this next one, same thing. Uh, let's put it out in a different font. There we have that. And so uh, there, there we have. And up here where it says reset, that does not mean this. It's reset by itself. If you click that, it'll reset back to the original. But here, let's check it uh, to, to accept the change. And let's play it through by putting it right here, spacebar. There we go. Okay, and you would have several lines here. It'll let you do several lines. Uh, you just have to be careful that uh, you know you don't uh, go too far down or too far up. In that case, what you're going to do is you're just going to uh, use the size here and reduce the size, you know, that kind of thing. So there, see. Okay, to make it fit. Okay, and those are the titles. Backgrounds are a lot of fun. Um, this is where you're going to find the world, the globes uh, that you've seen so often. I love those. Uh, let's, I'm going to scroll over here so you can see. And if you look over in the window, you'll see that the fonts uh, are different. So there's one that's different. Uh, that's the, kind of the same. But 
those that's a sans serif font which is generally best for video on it and here we have a serif font you cannot change the fonts in in this pro in in this map and uh, let's put one down here uh, so you can see I'm going to just use this one right here is it this one yeah this one so I'm going to drag it down here here we have it, and I'm going to drag it out a little bit. If you if you just make, lengthen it, and you can lengthen it to any length you want, it just it'll go like molasses if it's too it's too much, and it'll go really fast if it's as low as it'll go, which <laughs> looks like that's about it. So I'm going to put it just maybe about you know five seconds or something right here, and we can see. So I'm going to double click it. Well, it's actually already loaded. So right up here. It's, it has a start and a stop. So it's going to start in San Francisco, but suppose we change that to Iran, and we'll just leave that there. And here's something cool that you can do. I'm just going to choose one at random. Uh, how about this one in Denmark? But instead of that, it's around Denmark. We're going to call it Gainesville. There we go. And let's see what happens when we play that. Play it through. To Gainesville. Gainesville changed location. Uh, and so what if you went, wanted to go from Gainesville to another place? You would just keep doing that over and over. There we go. So in the next, next time, the starting place would be it's not Gainesville, unfortunately, so uh, I would mess that up. Uh, but it would just go from there, and then that's how you could go from several places if you wanted to. Uh, un interestingly enough, on this particular one, uh, you can change this. Uh, I'm going to double click it again. Uh, blue marble, or you could have uh, it will change to different, different kinds uh, with the same font though so you could change that it's really these other ones <laughs> but I wouldn't do it like right now okay and then those are the backgrounds transitions let's talk about those really there's only two that you'll probably end up using and that's a cross dissolve and a fade to black which we'll put at the end let's put a cross dissolve right there those are really the, you know these other ones can kind of look a little tacky honestly so I'm going to put it right here. Let's play it through. See a very nice transition. And then another one. And then fade to black. And those are really the two that you'll use the most. That said, don't be afraid to try any of these because uh, I'm going to put this in here. It just it it will uh, it will just replace it if you put it over there. So let's try and see what that does. Okay, so uh, you can try them. It says no, no, if it fits and it works, uh, just use it. And of course, we can delete any of that just by highlight and delete, uh, and, and this too for that matter. Okay, and then that is how you can navigate through these different buttons that do different things. Now, it does a lot more. Uh, but we're just going to keep it simple for now. Uh, there's a lot of tools up in here, uh, which we will get into uh, a little bit. But, uh, well, actually, let's go back uh, before we leave this. Let's go back and look at the audio, because this, uh, this is really uh, something you need to know. I'm going to expand this up a little bit. Uh, let's go back to, let's see, we have this title here. And there's some advanced ways that we could address this, um, but we can do that in the group meetings. Um, but you'll notice that there's no sound under there. So typically people have put music under there and that's fine, but what if you maybe wanted to have uh, something like this, this right here, this is a lobby conversation, uh, just to have some something that's not just dead silence. So I'm gonna put that under there. It looks like there's a big gap that it really isn't. It's just telling you that's dissimilar clip. 
So I'm gonna, uh, there's some little handles here. I'm gonna drag those in so they'll fade in and let's see what that sounds like. Oh, I, I can tell you that it's loud. There's a little bar here and that's gonna adjust the volume up and down. I'm gonna drag it down a little bit. It's always loud, so let's play through and see what it sounds like. So you don't necessarily uh, have to use music. In fact, what would be good is if you could drag that out just a little bit so that it would fade under there. And uh, so I'm going to make it fade a little bit more and we'll see what that does. Let's see what that does. That's more of a nicer thing. And there's yet another way you can do this because uh, this is important to get your audio right. Remember the R? With it for range, we well, can also do it in here. So let's uh, let's make this a little bit longer. I'm going to type the R for range and draw a range. And here's a little secret weapon about the range. Uh, if you drag that in here, like so, or up, it will go a little bit louder. And now out here, we're dragging that down, and it's going to ramp up. So let's see what that sounds like. It's a little too early, but you see that's a way you can uh, make it go up and down. And if you even wanted to do more, if you type the option key and click there, you can make another keyframe and kind of make a little more of a curve. And also you can adjust these, these are called keyframing. So. And uh, let's go ahead and ramp that in there. So now we've created a pretty crafted bit of audio here. In just a second. So not to say that you necessarily have to use that, but uh, you don't. You don't. You're you're not just kind of joined to the hip for having music there. So let's look in some others here instead of people. We're going to go to our jingles, and those are typically the uh, music. So let's find one that, uh, how about this? Uh, I'm just gonna drag it, right? I'm just gonna drag it right, right down here. While we're on this section, uh, I wanna show you something that's really crucial. This, if you see this clip, it's in the special lane right now. And you can tell that because there's no peg in here, like this one has a peg. It's got, you see that? It's stuck in there. That means if you move this clip around, it's just gonna stick to that clip. But this isn't gonna stick anywhere, so it's just there. So you have to be aware of that. So if you get it up here, for instance, and then maybe put it under here, uh, now it is stuck and it won't move around if you shift or change anything. Uh, where it would be if it weren't pegged. So watch out for that. But it will layer, so uh, iMovie is famous for that. Let's try this. Uh, I'm going to distract this a little bit. Uh, here we go. So don't be afraid to use the special effects to create a really nice effect. Okay. And next, I'm going to just show you um, some interesting ways that you can use titles that you import. Uh, how, what we import? Why Word? Okay, stand by. Let's talk about the, what just happened here. We imported some audio in here. What do you think that did to the whole thing? Well, let's go find out. Let's go back to our workspace of My Media. And now we have our stills and our video. Uh, and here's our audio. You can see it's green. Uh, I don't see it in here, and I don't see it in here. But I'll bet you that if I did the entire folder, I would probably see it. And sure enough, there it is. These two are right here. Well, if you have a big project, you probably don't want to go hunting for it all the time. So what do you think we should do? I think we should make another folder for it. And it's called an event. Remember that? So here we go. Uh, we're going to do a 
new, uh, file and a new event or option in. So do that and it's going to go under the, the, the library called video tutorial. And what are we going to call it? Audio. There we go. Now, here we have uh, here we have our audio files that we've imported in there. And I'm going to select this and I'm going to select this, shift click, and now I'm going to drag those right in our audio. See it says two. There we have it. Now we have our audio, our stills, and our video. There we have it. Okay. And that's for audio. And for stills, we haven't talked about that, but uh, we can put our stills up in there. So let's just say she was talking about this group right here. I'm going to drag it right down there. I'll uh, make it a little bit bigger. Seven. That's, that's kind of a long way, so I think we need to zoom in a little bit more. There we go. Now if we play this, uh, watch what happens. ¿Y cómo fue la experiencia de aprender inglés en la escuela y en los trabajos? ¿Cómo aprendiste also, these little blue handles, let's fade it in. Let's do that again. So that's a beautiful transition. And that's the way uh, you would do your still, your, your still pictures. Okay, next, uh, we're going to look at how do we get a custom-made uh, title in there. So remember how we can just drag something in here? Well, I have made uh, something on Word that I just made a screenshot of, but first of all, I'm going to show you the Word document itself. This is it. So all I did was I put some shapes, I put a green background, and I know ahead of time that I can't do much about moving this in the frame, so I made it small like this because I know that's where it's going to end up. So here we go. I just made a screenshot of this. Okay. And I have that right here. I'm going to drag it in. Remember, we can drag it. And now, look, I can drag it straight to the timeline, right? So we're going to go up here and cut away. We're going to find the green, green effect. And there it is. I'm going to take it. And there we have that. Uh, we can also fade that in so that it's really, really nice. You just. Esto, este año y medio fue de aprendizaje de inglés. So what's happened is um, there is a little bit of white on the edge of this, but that's just because when I made the screenshot, I got a little bit of the white <laughs> on the edge. So we probably have to do the screenshot over again. Uh, so it fades in. That's pretty nice. All right. Um, and you, there's effects and things you can play around with that. Uh, different effects uh, for the clips uh, and uh, there we go so I mean we could wow. all kinds of effects up here <laughs> that you could do uh, so anyway wow. I just point that out because it <laughs> is available all right I'm gonna just just close that out cancel there we go all right so we've looked at this kind of custom title that you can make in Word, and what what else could you do? You could you could put a title uh, instead of using this one here. You could make one uh, that would fit in here uh, using Word and, or just anything that you wanted to make it really really fancy. You could, but you have to understand that when you do uh, bring it in, you can't um, you can't resize it, so it has to be pretty much these dimensions. Uh, in the case of this Word. Uh, it's close, it's, it's pretty close, but I think it could be a little wider. So that's the way you make it, and then that way you can get rid of the green, and it'll fit in there just, just as you kind of uh, proactively thought about it. All right. So the other thing I'd say about the titles is why, is why we're going to have to finish out our subtitling in Final Cut Pro. So let's go up to our titles, and let's look at these titles, every last one of these titles. Uh, have animation on them, and you cannot use that for subtitling, right? You just, you just can't do it. Um, there's only one that we were using, but we kind of gave up. It was just too hard to type it, and it's called Lower. You, if you finish the end of that, it'll, it'll swing over to another line, but you can't control 
the line spacing. So even with two lines, it's going to be way up here. So this is, it just didn't work out. Uh, the other big drawback of this is you can't put a background on here. I'm just going to uh, take that right there. You can't put a background, and a lot of times you can't read it. So there's that. And a real problem is <laughs> you can't move it around. You, in Final Cut Pro, you can do all of these things. So that's why we finish it out with Final Cut Pro, which makes beautiful, beautiful titles. All right, well, that's a whirlwind uh, kind of process of getting your footage into iMovie. Let's go back to our media. Remember, that's how we navigate up here. Uh, we got our footage in. We know about the library. We made a new library, so we won't get confused by the generic name for the library that is in your hard drive. It's going to be on your hard drive in where? The Movies folder. All right, well, that's the quickest way I could get through the basics. iMovie does a lot. Uh, we could go on and on, but I think we'll kind of learn as we go. Be in. Thank you very much, and see you soon.